Good evening. It's Saturday, the 10th of May. You're tuned in to our 6 p.m. newscast coming to you from Arirang's news centre in Seoul. We start with the latest on the Sewolho ferry disaster. Search efforts continue in waters off Korea's southwestern coast on this Saturday. This is where the ferry sank 25 days ago with more than 300 passengers trapped inside. Our Nah Hyung Young reports. Two more bodies were recovered during overnight rescue operations that went on through the early hours of Saturday morning. The number of confirmed dead now stands at 275 people, with 29 still unaccounted for. Search efforts are continuing in waters off of Korea's southwestern Jindo Island, but gusty winds and high waves brought rescue operations to a halt earlier on this Saturday. With a special warning for heavy winds and waves in effect for the region, an official from the response team reportedly said divers will most likely not be able to resume operations until Monday. Meanwhile, prosecutors raided an office of a ferry operator in the southeastern port city of Busan. It's the first time a passenger ship operator not related to the ferry disaster has been raided since the accident. The company operates two more than 5,000-ton ferries, both built more than 20 years ago. The prosecution is looking into whether the firm abided by safety regulations and also potential corruption charges involving officials at the Korean Register of Shipping. Prosecutors did, however, stress that they do not intend to expand the scope of their probe to target the overall shipping and cruise industry. As for the investigation into the Seolho ferry operator, Cheonghaejin Marine Company, police and prosecutors are reportedly finding more evidence that the practical owner, Yu byung on was indeed involved in the management of the firm. They also reportedly have testimony from Kim Han-sik, CEO of the ferry operator, that he reported the accident to Mr. Yu. As their findings pile up, the investigative team plans on summoning the man in question as early as next week. In the meantime, prosecutors called veteran actress Chun Yang Ja in for questioning on Saturday. She's the president of a media company affiliated with the ferry operator. Na Hyun Gyo, Arirang News. And people from across the country are continuing to pay their respects to the victims of the ferry disaster. So far, more than 460,000 people have visited the memorial altar in Ansan in Gyeonggi-do province. That's where the more than three, more than uh, the uh, 300 high school students on board the ferry are from. In total, some 1.6 million people have paid their respects at altars set up around Korea. And today, several rallies and candlelight vigils are taking place in Seoul. Different religious and civic groups are paying tribute to the victims and also offering support to their families and calling for the cause of the accident to be identified and those responsible to be brought to justice. A top U.S. transportation expert has suggested that Korea should bring the development and improvement of family assistance plans to the forefront of its strategy in dealing with transport-related disasters like the Sewolho ferry sinking. In a recent blog post on top U.S. political website The Hill, Jamie Finch, former director of government, public and family affairs at the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, said the ferry sinking shows how Korea and many other countries around the world have yet to reach even the minimum standards in addressing families' needs after such tragic accidents, pointing out how some of the families of the Sewolho victims were traumatized even further when several of the bodies were returned to the wrong families. Finch says the U.S. should use its influence to press Korea to embrace a more thoughtful emergency response that mirrors the openness and standards seen in the U.S. and most of the West. Now, North Korea has been making threats again. This time, it says it will respond in the strongest possible way to any South Korean and U.S. provocations related to its recent firing exercises. In an article published in one of, the one of its dailies on Saturday, the North Workers' Party said its military exercises were legitimate 
preparations to defend itself from any outside aggression. Pyongyang says it has not ruled out the use of nuclear weapons in its response in a possible reference to a fourth nuclear test. Meanwhile, the U.S. has reiterated that North Korea must take meaningful steps towards denuclearization and refrain from provocations before the resumption of the six-party talks. A spokesperson from the State Department said the U.S. has seen no evidence of North Korea's willingness to stick to its side of the bargain. The six-party talks involving the two Koreas, the U.S., China, Japan and Russia, have been stalled since late 2008. Now, the United Nations Security Council has strongly condemned the abduction of hundreds of Nigerian schoolgirls and is demanding their immediate and unconditional release. In a joint statement Friday, the council said the mass kidnappings by the militant Islamist group Boko Haram may amount to crimes against humanity under international law. And the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Samantha Power, said the council should act quickly to designate Boko Haram as a terrorist group and hold its murderous leaders to account. Scores of militants kidnapped more than 250 girls from a secondary school in a remote part of northeastern Nigeria on April 14th, and the group has threatened to sell them into slavery. U.S., British and French experts are now in Nigeria and they're working closely with the Nigerian army and air force to scour the area for any sign of the girls. Now, on a much lighter note, Korean language has become a part of the regular curriculum at a school in Brazil, Colegio Diaspora in Sao Paulo, offers primary education to some 200 students. Kids there have been taking Korean classes as an optional after-school activity since September last year, but now the course has been made mandatory thanks to the rising popularity of the Korean wave. Five schools currently provide Korean language classes as an extra-curricular activity in the South American country, but of them, two more are considering following suit and making the course a regular subject in their curriculum. And back here in Korea, Korea has been heralded for its education system and it can now add another distinction to its long list of honours. A global education and publishing firm has ranked Korea number one in its global league table of education systems. Ah Son Jung-in has this report. In its global study titled The Learning Curve, Education and Skills for Life, British firm Pearson ranked Korea number one in educational performance among 39 countries followed by Japan, Singapore and Hong Kong. The latest index was based upon an amalgamation of existing data from international organizations as well as figures on literacy rates and school attendance. It also included higher education graduation rates, which helped Korea earn the top spot. Students in Korea have consistently excelled in the fields of math and science, but the latest findings also showed strong scores in problem solving. In the latest round of program for international student assessment exams, the results of which were also included, Korean students ranked number two in the world in tackling real-life problems. Analysts attribute Korea's competitive high-stakes education culture as well as high parental expectations for the results. However, there is always room for improvement. Pearson said it saw a sharp drop in creative problem-solving skills for adults once they passed their mid-20s. It cited the Korean education system's reliance on memorization and raised questions about the long-term value of the road learning. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Now, the U.S. government has poured millions upon millions of dollars into a project to get a better understanding of the human brain. Leading the project is a Korean-American professor at MIT, and he believes he has the key to finding out what causes mental illnesses, our Kim Minji reports. A connectome is an extensive map of neural connections in the brain. Sebastian Sung, a professor of computational neuroscience at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, introduced the term through a TED conference in 2010, and his book Connectum, How the Brain's Wiring System Makes Us Who We Are, has since become a bestseller in the U.S. 
So this worm has only 300 neurons and 7,000 connections. Your connectome has, you also have a connectome, and it's 100 billion neurons and 10,000 connections per neuron. In a recent talk with Korean brain scientist, Sebastian Singh stressed the connectomes were the key to uncovering the causes of various mental illnesses such as dementia and autism. He berated the modern science community for focusing their research on brain regions rather than on connectomes. Which enable us to look inside the living human brain and help us figure out what each region of the brain does. But intellectually, that way of understanding the brain is still the same as it was in the 19th century. Professor Singh has an ambitious goal of mapping the neural connections of the human brain. Um, if computers get faster and faster, the same way that they've been getting for 50, the last 50 years, mm -hmm. we should be able to map an entire human connectome, uh, I hope, uh, in my lifetime. If it is as predicted by Professor Sung, the mysteries of the brain would also likely be solved sooner rather than later. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Well, good luck to him. Now, taking a brief look at the weather, most of the country is under partly cloudy skies this evening. It will be a relatively mild night with the overnight low only dipping down to 13 degrees Celsius in Seoul. More clear sunny skies are in the forecast nationwide on Sunday, but, but a band of rain, rain rather, is expected to sweep through in the evening. Daytime highs on Sunday will be in the low to mid-20s. Now let's take a look at the weather wherever you are in the world. And that's all for now. We'll be back again for our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time.